So imagine, if you will, that you go for a nice nature hike in the forest, in the mountains. And there you are, it's a beautiful pine forest and you're walking through it and then you walk up on top of a small hill. And now you're on top of this hill and you're looking around you and you see all these giant pine trees and they are stretching out into the distance as far as your eyes can see all the way to the horizon. You can see 50 miles all around you in a circle. Now 50 miles is equivalent to 80,000 square miles. And so what you do is you just pick up one little pine needle off the ground and you look at it real closely as you hold it in your hand. And you wonder, this pine needle is still green, it's still fresh, it just fell off the tree next to you. And you look up at this tree next to you and you wonder how many of these pine needles must there be on this tree? Maybe 100,000 as a rough estimate. That's pretty amazing in and of itself. 100,000 of these living pine needles. These pine needles, they're filled with chlorophyll and they're filled with complicated cells and DNA and bacteria and little molecules and mitochondria and all this sorts of stuff exists in there. Not to mention all the little atoms that make up each one of these organelles and cells and, and all of that. And it's amazing. And then you look out far to the horizon 50 miles all around you and you wonder how many of these pine trees must there be? 5 billion pine trees roughly fit into an area of 8,000 square miles, which is what you see all around you. And each one of them has 100,000 pine needles, let's say. That's 5,000 billion needles that you're looking at. And then you look back down at your hand and you look at the pine needle in your hand a little bit closer and you see a little ant crawling over it, hitching a ride on the pine needle. And then you wonder how many of these ants must there be on the entire planet? 10,000 trillion ants is one estimate. And then you look a little closer at the pine needle and you see little grains of sand stuck to the pine needle, and you wonder how many of these grains of sand must there be on the entire planet? Seven million trillion grains of sand on Earth. And then you wonder, well, what about all the atoms that make up this one little grain of sand that I'm holding in my hand? 50 million trillion atoms in one grain of sand multiplied by 7 million trillion grains of sand on the entire Earth. And then you notice the sunlight shining down upon you from the sun. And you wonder, well, what about this sunlight? What is the sunlight? It's photons. How many of those must there be shining down upon me right now? 1,000 trillion photons per second per square centimeter. And this 8,000 square miles around you, that's 80 million square centimeters that you're looking at of sunshine, multiplied by 1,000 trillion photons per second per square centimeter. And then you wonder about the cosmos and you wonder about other planets besides earth in our solar system you wonder about jupiter 1300 earths fit into jupiter and you wonder about the sun itself 1 million 300 thousand earths fit into the sun and that's just our solar system then you wonder how many of these solar systems are there out there how many stars 100,000 million stars within the Milky Way galaxy. And that's one galaxy. And how many galaxies are there? 100 billion galaxies comprise our universe. And of course, because you know Newtonian mechanics, 
uh, just very basic physics, not going into some sort of fancy voodoo, uh, quantum mechanical stuff, but just basic Newtonian mechanics, you know that every single atom and every single particle in the entire universe is pulling on every single other one. That's basic gravitation, nothing fancy. Basic gravitation tells you that. They're all infinitely interacting with each other. Every single pine needle that you see on every single tree is gravitating and pulling on every other single pine needle, determining the entire outcome of what the forest looks like right now, among everything else. Every single star in the entire universe, all the hundreds of billions of them, are all right now exerting gravity upon that one little grain of sand that you have in your hand, determining its precise position and behavior. And then, of course, you realize, well, this is just our universe. Why would there only be one universe? Why wouldn't there be more than one? How many could there be? Well, why would there be a limit? Why couldn't there be infinite universes like ours? Or similar to ours? Or vastly different from ours? And then you notice that all of this has just been five minutes of you standing here looking out on these trees and thinking about all this, contemplating reality. And that's just been five minutes out of a time span of four billion years just for our universe. And all of this, this, this marvelous organic machine, which is reality, runs perfectly without a single glitch, without a single frame drop, without a single moment of lag, without any errors. Your computer craps out and glitches out if it just stands idle, running idly for, what, a couple of weeks, for a month? It's going to crap out. It's going to crash. This thing has been running for 14 billion years without a glitch. It's infinite. It contains infinite universes within it. It doesn't stop. And then the strange loop hits you because you realize that this boundary between subject and object, you observing the pine needle, that there is no such boundary and that actually what you're observing is what you're being and that this pine needle literally is you. But of course, not just the pine needle, all of it. Everything you see and everything you contemplate and the entire known universe and anything beyond it, all of it is infinite. Infinite in infinite degrees. And it's alive. The entire universe is alive and self-aware just as you are. Because aliveness and self-awareness is not a property of human beings or yourself. It's a property of everything. Because there's no boundary between you and the universe and anything else. And as you realize all this, you say to yourself, my God, my God, what am I involved with here? Something much larger than myself is at work here. This is no ordinary clockwork universe. This is an infinity of infinity of infinity of infinity of infinity. 